Tonight, God's message is based on a very curious and a very confusing question. A very solemn question and a very serious question. A question tonight perhaps you may have asked in, in days gone by. The question is tonight, can a man die before his time? In other words, let me make this a wee bit more personal tonight. Can you die before your time? We need to get the question answered tonight. And we need to know how the Bible answers that question. Can a man die before his time? You may challenge me in that question tonight. There's people who would tell me, George, if you're born to be shot, you'll be shot. If you're born to be hung, you'll be hung. And if you're born to drown, you'll drown. Whatever's laid out for you, George, that's the way you're going to go. Can you die before your time? The Reverend Sam Workman was leaving the White Abbey Hospital many, many years ago. When a young man came to him and said, ask the very same question, Mr. Workman, can you die before your time? Sam Workman turned round to the young man and says, well, what do you think, son? What do you think? Oh, I don't think, Mr. Workman, you can die before your time. You mean to tell me, he said, that if you were to walk out in front of a bus, if it's not your time to go, you'll not go. That's right, Mr. Workman, he says. Well, he says, come on out onto the dock road here. Now, there's the, Be <laughs> this is, there's the Belfast uh, Express coming down now, he says. Well, see if you're right or wrong. Go ahead. Oh, now, Mr. Workman, I wouldn't do that. He says, now, that's tempting fate. He says, well, why, why, why are you scared for it? He says, I make it, I may die, he says. But if it's not your time to go, he says, if it's not your time to go, you'll not die. Now, go on ahead now. It'll be, it'll be coming soon. Are you going to go? Indeed or not, he says. That's the height of foolishness. Mr. Workman said to him, what was that again you said? That's the height of foolishness. Sam Workman said to the young man, well, you've just answered the question. Can a man die before his time? Sam Workman had a Bible in his hand and he turned to this text to show the young man clear the answer to that question. I want you to turn to that text with me just now. And it's found in the Old Testament book of the Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Can you die before your time? The Reverend Sam Workman turned this young man to this text and he read it out before him and this is the text Ecclesiastes chapter 7 now I'm going to give you a wee time to find the place it's not an easy book to find you find the book of Psalms after the book of Psalms it's Proverbs and after the book of Proverbs we come to the book of the Ecclesiastes you just take your time and find it, because I want you to see this for yourself. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and it's verse 17. 
Now here is the text. Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish, why shouldest thou die, listen to it, before thy time? Can a man die before his time, sir? And the Bible makes it clear. A man can die before his time. You may ask me the question tonight, and I'll do the best to answer it. What about a good, upright young man? Never done anybody any harm. Ways nearly as Solomon. Filled with common sense. Godly man. Young man. He dies as a teenager. Would you say to me that young man died before his time? Let's be honest. My friend, I don't believe so. Many a young man I know, godly Christian young men died young doesn't mean they died before their time. I know the Bible talks to us about the three score years and ten. It talks to us about the three score years and ten, but the Bible doesn't guarantee we'll reach it. A young man godly young man he was. He was an elder in Ochnacloy Free Presbyterian Church. His name was Jervis. Jervis Locker. One Saturday morning was taking part in a vintage tractor rally. Going up the hill, he tried to drop her down a gear and she wouldn't go into the gear and she started running back and he tried to back her into the hedge. Tractor overturned. Killed him instantly. A member was preaching locally that Sunday night after. And I remember going to the wake on the Sunday afternoon. And Tracy and I are very friendly with Norman, his brother. And I remember going to the home. A sad home it was. I remember shaking hands with Norman saying, Norman, I can't believe what happened. You know what Norman said? George, his time was up. Can a man die before his time? See, my young person tonight, now you listen. You're not guaranteed to be old. The old must die. But always remember the young may die. God only knows the appointment date that's set for you and set for me. But can a man die before his time? If you look at that text carefully tonight, that text teaches me that a man can die before his time on two grounds. He can die, first of all, 
on the ground of woeful wickedness. Be not much wicked. Be not over much wicked. Now what's God trying to say to us tonight? God's trying to say this. When man crosses the boundaries and goes into extreme wickedness, he stands on the danger of dying before his time. You know tonight you mightn't like this, and I'm including myself in this, There's that spirit of wickedness in all of us. Myself included. You see, the Bible makes it very clear, friends. Jeremiah 17 and 9, The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. And who can know it? I'll tell you, friend, God knows it. God says, I search the heart. And I know what's there. And my friend, the Lord Jesus Himself said, Out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murderers, adulterers, for fornication, a theft, false witness, and blasphemy. And let me tell you, friends, like every one of us, there's that spirit of wickedness in all of us. The human heart tonight is a wicked thing. But some of us tonight can control that wickedness. And sometimes many of us can hide that wickedness. The heart of man is wicked. Be not over much wicked. Woeful wickedness. Our wee country, our wee country knows all about the woeful wickedness of man. Your community and our community suffered greatly at their hands. But this text tonight has often time and time has been proven right. It's been proven right. Wicked men can die before their time. Do you know tonight what, what, what uh, Psalm 55 and verse 23 says? Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. About 12 o'clock today, an unknown number appeared on my mobile phone. I don't like the, the unknown numbers. Who's this boy trying to bluff? And it was a friend of mine. And he's a police inspector in County Fermanagh. Haven't heard of him this long time and the phone rung and boys of boys there it was, it was right. Him and I chatted and we talked and we talked about the things of God. He told me a story on the phone that sealed this message. So say, Roy, by you have, the Lord has made you ring me today. And I quoted the text and he understood why. There was a man from County Monaghan 
And he came from the town of Monaghan. And he was a ruthless killer in the Republican movement. On the Wednesday night, a converted Roman Catholic. Now listen to me. God doesn't look down on people as Catholics and Protestants because in God's sight there's no such a thing. I want to make that clear. There'll be no Protestants in heaven. There'll be no Catholics in heaven. There'll be no Protestants in hell. Neither will there be Catholics in hell. The lost will be in hell and the saved will be in heaven. Full stop. Full stop. But on the Wednesday, it was May 1987, and this converted Roman Catholic went to this man's flat in Monaghan town and told him and warned him to give up what he was doing, repent of his sin, and trust the Lord and be forgiven and be saved. That man never responded. But he said, he listened. And as this man told him about the love of God and his need to repent and to give up the armed struggle as he put it, he will find that he'll be forgiven if he trusts Christ. He never answered him. On the Friday night, on the Friday night, he and seven others headed to the village of Loch Gaul and was cut down when he was 31 years of age. Wicked. Bloody, deceitful men shall not live out half their days. Be not thou over much wicked. Friend, I know a thing or two about the trouble. I've seen things at first hand. And many of them men, cold-blooded killers, murderers, often died violently and prematurely. A young prison officer was shot dead outside a chapel in Clocker at his brother's wedding. Three men were seen at the scene, could never be charged, they hadn't enough evidence, but within a year, each of them three men died violent deaths. Wicked and bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their death. You can die before your time on the grounds of woeful wickedness. You may say to me, George, that doesn't count me. Well then, the oak, let's come to the other grounds upon which a man can die before his time. Because it says there, be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. You see, not only can you die before your time on the grounds of woeful wickedness, but you can die before your time on the grounds of fearful foolishness. 
Man can die before his time through foolishness. You know, God gave us all a brain, didn't he? And he gave some of us brain. He gave me beauty. But he gave all of us brains. And he gave all of us friends. To see. Now listen to me before I go any further here. Don't you forget this now. You were made in the image of God. Every human being born into this world, remember you were created in the image of God. God gave us all what we call common sense. Some of us have more than others. But God gives man a choice. And God gives man a responsibility to be wise or to be foolish. You and I this evening have got the responsibility to discern what's wise and what's foolish. You see, Proverbs 10, 21 stands out with me now. What does Proverbs 10, 21 say? Fools die. Now get this. Fools die. What for? For the want of wisdom. Fools die. For the want of wisdom. Those tonight, listen to me. We can all make mistakes in life. But God speaks about the people who are deliberate fools. Those people tonight who dice with death, ignoring the dangers. You take a young man in the middle of Kilkeel Street tonight, and he's smoking his brains out with, with drugs. You know what he's doing? He's killing himself into an early grave. Did God intend, did, did God ever intend that young man to smoke himself? Others perhaps to drug themselves? Others perhaps to drink themselves into an early grave? God never intended such. But man makes the choice. God never intended man to dice with death. My inspector friend Roy told me another story. Two years ago, he was called to a scene where two young men were killed in a van. The van overtook a row of cars. They veered in, out again and away like the bullet. They almost killed others in the process, but one corner they went just too hard. Lost it. One young fellow was found down underneath the dashboard. The other fellow, he was hanging out through the windscreen. Both of them dead. You know what he said to me? George, you tell the people tonight what I saw at first hand. Foolishness caused them boys to die before they came. We just got one of them zipped into the body bag. 
said, and his phone began to ring. And as the phone rang, we knew that whoever it was wasn't going to get an answer. He says, the speed, the recklessness caused them two young men to die before their time. I see an old young fella in here. I want to warn you from this platform, never you dice with death. You can die before your time, son. I can take you to another home in Achnachlai where a young fella, 14 died. Utter foolishness. Madness. Quick temper. The father... Father had given him an awful scold. He didn't, he didn't lift his hand. He didn't lift his hand to the young fellow. But he gave him an awful scold. And the young fellow, out of a quick temper, 14 years of age, went and got the father's 2 2 rifle and turned it on himself. Fourteen years of age, died before his time. God only has the right to take life. I'll never forget the day of his funeral. In fact, his was the first coffin I ever carried. I'll never forget the graveside seat. Dr. McCord had him a call because the mother tried to get into the grave to be with him. Young man tonight, you listen. Be not much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Can you die before your time tonight? You can die before your time. But here's the question I'm coming with now that as I'm closing. That's not the question I want you to answer me. Now here's the question I do want you to answer me. Are you going to die unsaved? What way are you going to die? It's appointed unto men once to die, but after this is the judgment. After this is the judgment. My dear unsafe friend tonight, unsafe friend, none of us in this meeting is guaranteed tomorrow. Please mark my words. In the epistle of James, we're told, take no thought for tomorrow. Think now, friend. The most important question is not, can you die before your time? The most important question is, will you die unsaved? Will you die tonight unprepared to meet God? But as I bring this meeting to a close, I want you to know something tonight. There's a Savior who died on Calvary's cross to save you. My friend, he was crucified on that old rugged cross at Calvary because there's no other means and there's no other condition there's no other grounds tonight upon which a man can be saved or a woman. 
Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Death's coming, sir. Death's coming, dear. Are you ready for it? That's an important friend today to ask the question, where will I spend eternity? If you go tonight, sir, if you go tomorrow, sir, dear, tell me, where will you spend eternity? I'll tell you where you'll spend it. You ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart tonight and you repent of your sin and come and trust in Him, you'll be in heaven. Glory to God. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. But you fail to receive Him. Go out into that car park. Never get a chance like this again. You'll be in hell. But God loves you, friend. Friend, God is not willing that any should perish. Do you know what the Bible talks about, the woeful, wicked men? Do you know what the Bible says? Well, you know what God said? Have I any pleasure that the wicked should die? Listen to me. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And God has no pleasure in the death of the unseen. God is not willing that any man or woman or young person in this meeting tonight to be lost. God sent His Son to die on the cross to be your Savior. Tell me tonight, does that not touch you? To think that God, the Creator of this universe, loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son to die on that cross to be your Savior and to suffer and to bleed and to die. But on the third day He rose again. Look, hallelujah, He's alive. And He's here tonight to meet with you personally. You know what He said? Him that cometh to me no matter who she is, no matter who he is, and listen, no matter what they've done, the promise is, him that her that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. But friend, this is your choice. It's my responsibility to deliver unto you God's message. And it's my responsibility to now to leave it with you. And it's your responsibility the ball is now in your court. Either to receive Christ as your Savior or to reject Him. Christ, Christ only. Now, you forget about George McConnell. Think of none now but Christ, the one who died to save and who now lives to call ye to himself the sea. Friend, the question is, can a man, no, is not, can a man die before his time? The question you need to ask yourself now is, where will I spend eternity? Eternity. Eternity. One hundred years from now, we'll all be in it. And then up by one of us here. Eternity. 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 Where? In eternity. Let's all take a moment and we'll bow in prayer, please. My friend, tonight, this is not between you and me. These moments now are between you and God. Maybe you've 
And maybe tonight God has been speaking. You have heard His voice over the nights that has gone by. He's calling and He's pleading and He's troubled you. And you've been thinking about it. Boys, I'd love, I'd love to get saved. I would love to get right with God. Well, friend, the only opportunity God gives you is the one you've got now. Maybe I'm talking to a backslider tonight. There was a way back a time when you walked with God and you knew Him as your Savior, but you're away far from Him. Tonight He calls you come home. Come back to me afresh. I'm speaking to a backslider tonight, and God has been speaking. Friend, leave this no longer. Come to the Savior tonight. He loves you. Loved enough to die for you. You come to Him now, won't you? I want you to know with every head bowed, every eye closed, and God's people praying, listen, there's a little caravan outside. If you others have have invited me in there to speak to me. Listen, tonight this is your opportunity. I'm not here to force anybody. I'm here to listen to you now. You've, you've listened to me. Now it's my turn to listen to you. And if you'd like to come and speak to me, just say to me at the door, George, I'd like a wee word. We'll slip into the caravan and anything that's said in there is confidential. Don't leave this any longer, friend. Now is the accepted time. Behold now, behold now, is the day of salvation. I take a wee moment just to remain in the stillness of God's presence. These are solemn and sacred moments. It's between you and the Lord. What will you do? Lord, in the stillness of these moments, give the saving grace unto God be all the glory. In our Savior's name, we pray. Amen.